uh, a quarterback when someone swings a helmet at his head. Yeah, and, you know, we talk about the, the what-ifs. I mean, let's think about it this way. Mason Rudolph just got off of a concussion protocol, was able to, to come back and play. Mo, I know you cover the Browns, and you're up there in their neck of the woods in the facility all the time. What was the feel uh, uh, after this happened? And let's, let's also talk about another thing here that, uh, that Adam brought up earlier uh, in that a lot of fans have a lot of the disdain now for kitchens. And although we can't directly blame kitchens for this re- result of this event, Adam made an interesting point that kitchens has allowed an undisciplined team to be undisciplined. How much of this, if any, but aren't we to the point where this could just be the straw that broke the camel's back, if you will, for Kitchens uh, to find his way out, even if it was a good win against Pittsburgh? Yeah, I mean, you look at a guy, you know, in his rookie season as a head coach who, you know, gets the second win in a row, and finally, you know, you were thinking maybe the talk would die down, and all of a sudden it's back that, uh, that uh, you know, he has no control over this team. And, you know, that's been the talk all season long, how undisciplined this football team has been. And that's because, uh, you know, it, it always is going to fall back to the head coach. They don't play the games, but, you know, he, he led an undisciplined football team onto the field since day one, and, and that's a bad look for him and for the Browns. But the one thing I will say is a lot of fans have given flack to Baker Mayfield for what he said directly after the team for not sticking up for his teammate. But, you know, I, I think Baker Mayfield finally did, uh, you know, he, he looked like a captain. He looked like a leader on that team, giving that interview immediately after the thing has happened without having time to really think about it. Uh, I think Baker Mayfield stood up and said, hey, this isn't what we're about. Uh, it's unacceptable. And, uh, you know, so for the people coming down hard on Baker, I think he did the exact same, the exact right thing, and that's what a leader should do. Finally, a disciplined look from somebody on this football team with Baker Mayfield's uh, quotes to Aaron Andrews right after the game. Right, and we can continue the debate. I know there's a lot of different angles, a lot of different takes on this. I just, at the end of the day, I think it just crossed the line from, from being in just a regular fight. You know, it's one thing if he was wearing a helmet, but as, 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 uh, as Ed said, you don't hit – a, a basically a defenseless man, and let's let's look at the difference in size between Mason Rudolph and and Miles Garrett. I mean that's that's huge. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll continue this discussion if you want. But I do want to get around the NFL while we got time to do that. We'll start with the Philadelphia Eagles. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, news and breaking news coming out of the Eagles camp. Uh, talk with us about the Eagles as you get ready for the Patriots, I believe, this weekend. Yeah, well, yeah, it is the Patriots, and the Eagles are probably going to be but after number one wide receiver and their number one running back, so, you know, Alshon Jeffrey, the receiver has already been ruled out uh, with an ankle injury. Somehow, you know, having a bye week didn't get, make that any better. He suffered it late in that went over the bears before the bye. And then Jordan Howard, their running back uh, has a, what they called a stinger uh, that he suffered in the bear game. And now two weeks later, he still has a shoulder problem. Hasn't been cleared for contact. You know, he's got seven touchdowns for the Eagles this year, Jordan Howard. And, uh, it leads the team in rushing with 525 yards, and you might be without both those guys. You're already at without Jeffrey. So they went out and signed Jay Ajayi, who you know was on the Super Bowl team two years ago, but hasn't played uh, in over a year after having ACL surgery when he tore his ACL in a game with the Eagles last year early in the season. Um, you know, and they signed a receiver off the street in Jordan Matthews earlier in the week. So you know you're going to go play a one-loss Patriots team who's probably the favorite to go back to the Super Bowl as they are every year with, you know, kind of guys off the street, uh, you know, and Matthews and, and Ajayi. Darren Sproles was put on uh, injured reserve. He's probably done. His career is probably over at the age of 36. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts with the Eagles. And, uh, you know, the whole medical staff here in Philadelphia has kind of been called into question for kind of negligence. I mean, uh, you know, Deshaun Jackson missed six or seven games. He came back against the Bears, played three snaps, and re-injured his uh, – abdomen to the point where he needed surgery uh you know was he ready to return everybody seems to think he was but the results say otherwise he went to surgery same with Darren Sproles he missed about a month with a quad injury played against the Bears a handful of snaps comes out of that with uh, a torn right hip flexor so you know he's clearly not ready to return but yet the Eagles keep running these guys out there and they're getting even hurt even worse once they return from injury so there's a lot going on in Philadelphia off the field that I don't see how it's not a distraction against the Patriots uh, this weekend. You know, New England, obviously, they lost that Super Bowl two years ago. There's been talk about that. Obviously, these are two different teams now, roster-wise, even coaching-wise. Uh, new new coaches on staff. Frank Reich, who was on the Eagles staff in 
That mm-hmm. Super Bowl is now obviously in Indianapolis, and Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator for Bill Belichick, is now the head coach in Detroit. So these teams are completely different. I will say the one area that isn't different is the Eagles' offensive line. It's pretty much the same offensive line uh, that they had in the Super Bowl. And for me, for the Eagles to have any kind of chance, they're going to have to run the ball uh, effectively. They're going to have to take care of the ball because the Patriots have forced 27 turnovers this year, which is uh, you know, a crazy number. Uh, of turnovers to a four. So they need to take care of the ball. They need to keep it close so they can run it and hope they can win kind of a close game late. I just don't see it happening, especially if Jordan Howard can't play. He's listed as questionable. And if he can't, you're looking at rookie Miles Sanders, who's more of a threat in the pass game at this point in his career, uh, and Jay Ajayi, uh, who hasn't played in over a year. I mean, that's just not an ideal situation at all for the Philadelphia Eagles. And let's not remember there's a little thing that, that they are still a little butt sore about, and that was the fact that you took a Super Bowl away from them. There, there's, there's that factor, too. So, Mo, help me play the homer yeah. card here. First of all, the freaking Dolphins. Are you kidding? I lost my junk. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> we were watching it here at the house. I lost my junk. And I don't typically – I'm not typically one of those fans that yell and scream and throw things. I, tore my jersey off and I was cussing Adam Vinatieri I was cussing Brian Hoyer and anybody else I could name but I mean a disappointing loss but to lose to the Dolphins and then to see one of the greatest kickers to ever play the game um, a friend of mine who covers locally uh, here in town says you know (laughs) there was probably 30 or 40 reporters all huddled around Adam Vinatieri At the end of the day, he's just a kicker. You never see that with a kicker. So we're just struggling. It's good to have Jacoby Brissett back uh, tomorrow against a very important must-win at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But, man, give me something to believe in, Mo, with the the Colts. (laughs) Well, you know, the uh, the injury bug, like most NFL teams this time of year, is hit the Colts hard. You know, no T.Y. Hilton in there. That really puts a lot of pressure on your other receivers. Uh, you know, to try to get open when T.Y. Hilton's in the game. He, yeah, he doesn't make every catch, or but he, he puts uh, a lot of uh, focus from the defense on him, and so that hurt Brian Hoyer. Uh, you know, no, Jacoby Brissett uh, was, uh, you know, huge for this team the last couple of games. And, you know, the Colts' defense looked terrible last week against the Dolphins. I mean, quite, to be quite honest, they, they just looked terrible. They let Ryan Fitzpatrick look like an all-pro quarterback, and, and that's a problem when you're playing a team that's that bad. And, uh you know, we made fun of the Jets for, for losing to Miami, but I think, you know, the Colts all, overall looked worse last week. And now they come into a, a, an important division game. Uh, you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, not uh, not the greatest season so far, but, you know, still not terrible. And they've got a pretty rough defense, and, and the Colts are going to have to step up on offense without T.Y. Hilton, and they're going to be able to run the ball better than they did last week. And they're also going to have to have much better play from their secondary, which was absolutely horrendous last week against the Dolphins. Well, absolutely. Uh, Ed, we're going to get, go around the league here, but I want you want to get your thoughts, man. I mean, I tell you what. <laughs> I, uh, I, pull, I pulled a Miles Garrett, man, on Sunday after that loss. But I, they they got to they gotta regroup, and they can't lose to Jacksonville at home tomorrow, Ed. Yeah, make sure you keep your sharp objects and shoelaces away from uh, away from yourself there. <laughs> Absolutely, but, you know, you're, forgetting, you're, you're forgetting a key ingredient that Jacksonville's bringing into this game, and that's Nick Foles. You know the magic of Nick Foles. He returns after uh, that broken clavicle in Week One, and uh, he's got Jesus give on the Jaguars. Side now. Well, he's always had it on uh, Jesus on his side. Well, know. You know, he's always been that uh, spiritual man. But he, he's uh, he, you know he he's a guy that's going to give that offense a huge huge lift and. You know, the Jaguars are sitting there at four and five in, the, in a division that is so tight and, uh, you know, still way up for grabs. And it's going to be real interesting to see what kind of effect he has on that team here as they head into the final, you know, whatever it is, seven games left of the season. If he can stay upright and if he can regain that magic that he had here in Philadelphia, then the Jaguars are going to be a force in this AFC South before it's all said and done. And it could start tomorrow in Indianapolis. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be facing the Jaguars this week with the return of Nick Foles. You're supposed to give me something to lift my spirit, Dad. <laughs> you didn't get the that's memo I here. To, I, I told you. That's why I told you to keep the sharp objects and shoelaces away. I, you know, that's it right. Be, it could. It could be ugly. 
Well, they let's uh, continue the conversation about the Dolphins. They've got the Bills. You were just up at the Bills uh, a couple weeks ago uh, and uh, saw the Bills play. I, I think a lot of I, I certainly didn't think we'd be talking about how good the Bills are this year at this point of the year. And they do have the Dolphins, and I can't see the Dolphins winning three in a row. I just can't see it happening. Well, especially after they traded away like half their team. I mean, I'm surprised they've won, you know, this many games, to be honest with you. And the, the Bills are kind of an enigmatic. You know, Josh Allen, the second year has kind of been up and down with them. And, um, you, you know, until he kind of can find a level of consistency, this is what you're going to get from the Bills. And they're going to have to win games with the defense. And I, I just don't, you know, I'd be surprised if Buffalo lost. But, uh, you know, the Bills are playing with confidence. So, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, another guy that has magic uh, on his side is, uh, you know, the quarterback, and he's given that team some life. But I just I, – I, you're right. I can't see the Dolphins winning three in a row. Well, I want to make sure we get your other team because you cover two teams in, in, your, in your market, what you do, the Bears and the Browns. Uh, the Bears to head out west, west coast to the Rams. Uh, break it down, what's been happening this week as the Bears get ready for a mediocre Rams. <laughs> Well, you know, the Bears are a less than mediocre team this year, uh, especially on offense. You know, they were helped out last week by the fact that Matthew Stafford did not play for the Lions in that game. Uh, Trubisky was able to hit a few things in the uh, second quarter to help lift the Bears. You know, it, it's it's weird because fans are almost more down uh, on him than they were on Cody Parkey last year after missing that kick against Philadelphia in the playoffs. Uh, you know, and, and you just look back at the Bears fan and you think, wow, we passed up on Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson for Mitch Trubisky. And, you know, you got to wonder when your quarterback continues to regress, you know, is it time to, to take a look at, at trying to put another quarterback in there? And, you know, we heard the news this week that, uh, you know, Cam Newton wouldn't oppose a uh, trade to the Bears. And while Cam's going to have to prove that, uh, you know, he's not uh, – he can be stay healthy – uh, a guy like Cam Newton in Chicago, I think, will lift the spirits of not only the, the team but of the Bears fans. And, and he's obviously not the quarterback he used to be, but, you know, you get a guy who's got swagger like he does and uh, in a huge media market like that, I think Cam Newton would play very well uh, in that organization. Uh, as far as the media goes, it's just can he stay healthy on the field and, and do the Bears want to do that? You know, if you if you bring another guy in, whether it be Andy Dalton or Cam Newton, uh, you know, Mitch Trubisky's career as a starter is, is effectively over. So, uh, you know, I think Bears fans at this point are, are looking for uh, uh, some help at quarterback. They're going out playing the mediocre Rams team, which is still, I think, better than, than the Bears at this point. You know, one thing that's hurt uh, you know, the Bears and Trubisky is last year the Bears scored a lot on defense, and that's something that they're not doing this year. The defense kind of come back to earth a little bit, but they're not scoring the points they did last year, which really helped out the offense, which if you go back and look, was just okay last year. They were nothing great. The Bears' defense scored a lot of points last year for them. So uh, I think going out west for this team at this point is going to be a loss to uh, to the Rams, even as mediocre as they seem to be right now. And we've got time for at least one more game here, and let's go with the uh, Cowboys and the Lions. Uh, uh, the Lions a little beat up. The Cowboys are certainly uh, – uh, playing some good football here recently, the Cowboys and the Lions. What say you, sir? Well, Matt Stafford's not playing for the Lions, so that's a huge advantage for, you know, for the Cowboys. Uh, You know, to be honest, I don't even know who the backup quarterback is in Detroit. I know he started last week, but I can't think of his name. But, uh, you know, that that to me is a win for – that better be a win for the Cowboys if they want to kind of, you know, put their stamp on this NFC East, especially with an Eagles team that, you know, is – as banged up as they are and uh, signing guys off the streets to kind of fill key roles. So, you know, I, I expect the Cowboys to kind of, uh, kind of win. They probably had that game against Minnesota last week. And, uh, they started running the ball after Dak Prescott had had a pretty good game and uh, they weren't able to score and get that winning touchdown late. So I, you know, I think going into Detroit, it's not the easiest place to play in the world, but uh, it's going to be made a lot easier because Matt Stafford is not going to be playing quarterback. Well, we'll certainly see what happens there real quickly. Guys, thumbs up or thumbs down, and we'll call it a day and wrap it up and put a bow on it. Uh, Ed, we'll start with you. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, uh, Miles Garrett, um, we'll be back next year, and all will be forgiven. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, I, th- I think thumbs up on that. I don't think you can 
you know, it's an emotional game. And, you know, like we talked about earlier, you can't do that. And the NFL needed to come down hard. Uh, and they did. They they sat him down for the rest of the season. I know it's going to be appealed, but I'd be surprised if the NFL, you know, kind of went back on this suspension. So I, I think he'll be all right. You know, I don't, I've never met uh, Miles Garrett. I never talked. 